Okay, so this is good. I've got a lot of information here, but I feel like I'm still missing a lot about the overall shape of this. Like, where am I going to go? Um, in order to work out how my graph is going to look, how the function behaves, I'm gonna need just a teeny bit more information. And there's lots of ways to do this next part, but I'm gonna get us to use our calculator because it's often one of the most reliable. And most people will find they understand this process and it's less theoretical, okay? What I'm gonna do is try and understand as I approach each of the asymptotes, which way am I coming from? Now, I already know some of this information. For example, with the horizontal asymptote up here, you can see when I approach um, positive infinity, as I get really large values of x, I know I'm gonna approach the horizontal asymptote from above, okay? So therefore, what that tells me is, see, here's the horizontal asymptote. I'm going to approach it, but I'm gonna do it from the top side, like so, okay? You can see, if I continue this, it would go somewhere up like that. Okay, I don't know the rest of the information yet, but that'll do for now. Um, and I'm just gonna sort of draw that arrow in as a guideline. Um, in the same way, when I'm on the other side, when I'm approaching uh, very large values of negative x, you can see I'm still gonna approach y equals zero, but I'm gonna do it from the bottom. I've got, I've got negative values here, right? So just like I drew this guideline over here on the right-hand side, I can draw another guideline over here on the left, but I notice it's coming from the bottom, like so. Okay. Now, this immediately actually tells me some information around this that I can, um, I can work out, for example, um, by seeing what happens at the asymptotes that are vertical, right? What happens when I get close to those? Well, you can see um, what I've got here is a vertical asymptote at negative one and a vertical asymptote at one. So I'm gonna check very close by on either side what's going on. So to help me, I'm actually gonna do a really quick table of values, right? I'm gonna say for X is close to negative one on the left, and then close on the right. So let's try an x value like say negative 1.001. What's that going to be? Well, it's going to be very close to this vertical line, but just a little bit further to the left, right? And then I want one that's also a bit close to the right. So what would that look like, but still be close? It would be something like negative 0 0.0. 999, that would still be very, very close, but on the other side of it, okay? So you can see x equals negative one, the asymptote. I don't need to evaluate that because I know it blows up my function. But these two guys here, what I'm gonna do, and I'll copy the um, definition of the function so I have it closer by. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy and use this to work out my values, okay? So I've got my calculator here. So um, sneaky little thing you can do is you can save um, variables into your calculator using the, um, the store and recall buttons that you can see here in, uh, on the bottom left hand side of the little buttons on your calculator. So if you don't know how to do that then um, you, know, you can ask one of your teachers but I'm going to take that negative 1.001 and I'm going to store that in as, as x and then what I'll do is I'm going to evaluate x plus 2 on x squared minus 1 for this particular value. So I'm going to go um, x plus 2 on the top and then x squared minus 1 on the bottom. And what I get for my y value is 499 and some other uh, values of um, decimal values, okay? In other words, this is a very, very large number, okay? Then when I put in the other one, I think we said it was going to be... Um, negative 0 0.999, so I'm gonna take that value there. And again, I'm gonna store that as one of my variables, so negative 0 0.999, uh, let's store that one. And now I'm gonna go and put it into the numerator and the denominator, I'm just gonna do the same substitution that I did before. So it's going to be uh, x plus two on the numerator, x squared minus one on the denominator, and I get minus 500. Okay, now what is this telling us, right? You're getting very, very large values, right? 500 uh, in the positive direction, 500 in the negative direction. So what's happening on either side of this vertical asymptote is, you have number one for this guy, this is a very large positive value, right? So therefore, I'm going up like this. Okay, that's what I'm getting just to the left of that vertical asymptote. And then on the right hand side of the vertical asymptote, I have very negative large values like that. That was, um. Negative 500 is what I got. It drops way off the bottom, okay? Now, I can repeat this process for the other vertical asymptote here, x equals 1. I can try out values that are just to the left of that asymptote, and I can try out values just to the right of that asymptote. And just for the sake of illustration and to prove um, the concept, when I go ahead and put it in, but this time for 
positives instead of negatives, 0 0.999. Um, I'm gonna get, let's see here, wow, negative 1,500 for this guy. And then when I go just to the right with 1.001, .001, when I go ahead and evaluate that, you're going to get, I wonder if you can predict what comes next, 1.001. .001. I'm getting 1,499 and some more decimals. I actually do think it rounds up, okay? But the actual value is not what matters, it's where the thing is going. So in other words, just on the left, so I've got sort of this table happening here, right? So if I just draw a big box around there, table, 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 just so you can see the piece of information more clearly. Just on the left of x equals one, you're dropping down, you're going, dropping like a rock, okay? So therefore, I'm gonna draw this line going downwards, just to the left of that asymptote. And then just to the right of that asymptote, you can see really large values for y positively. So therefore, your graph is gonna be up here. That's where you're headed. So now what I want you to have a look at, I'm gonna highlight them for you, right? Is I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, if you like, guidelines that I know have to join up. Um, and I should also mention, I have um, an intercept here at negative two and then another intercept here at negative two, right? So now all that's left is to join the dots, okay? Now let's go from left to right. If I start over there on the left-hand side, I know I've got to, from left to right, I've got to go downwards, right? This is a smooth graph but I have to sort of come back up toward this intercept. So therefore what that means is, there's no other choice for this. It has to go down, but then it's gotta come back up. You can see there, otherwise it would not meet that intercept. And once it goes back up, you can see it actually continues until it connects with this guideline that we drew up the top here. Okay, so there's the left-hand part of the graph. What about this middle section? Well, maybe you can start to see here. Um, in order to connect these, it's less complicated. Um, there's going to be, you know, this goes up, it hits your intercept, and then it comes back down. Uh, it looks a bit like a parabola, right? It's not a parabola. Parabolas have no asymptotes of any kind, um, but it does have this kind of arch shape, like a, like a concave down parabola, okay? And then over here on the right-hand side, again, it's not too complicated to fit this guideline. You can see I'm going downwards and then I have to drop down until I hit the other guideline, and then off I go. And I know this thing looks weird, but that's what you get out of this rational function. It's a strange beast, but once you put together your intercepts and your asymptotes, you get this shape and there's nowhere else you can go. That's worth pointing out, I don't need any points for scale on this guy, unlike our first hyperbola, because you've got both an x-intercept over here and also a y-intercept. So you've got a vertical and a horizontal scale implied by those coordinates, so I'm done.